Hello there, and thanks for joining us today. For technology in the modern era, size is everything, and ophthalmic devices are no exception. Innovation in the industry is hyper-focused on weight, size, portability, all to bring the most cutting-edge tech to patients wherever they are. We are here to talk about one such innovation, the handheld non-mindriatic fundus camera and why retinal imaging devices like it are must-haves, even for non-ophthalmologists, and especially in emergencies. Joining us to talk about this is Dr. Rudrani Banik, a world-renowned neuro-ophthalmologist, researcher, and author out of New York City. In your opinion, why do you think it's so important for both neurologists, maybe emergency doctors, to conduct retinal examinations? It is so important because uh, oftentimes these providers are the first line. Our patients are coming in with symptoms like blurry vision or headaches, sometimes even more serious conditions like loss of vision or other neurologic symptoms. And ED doctors, neurologists, primary care doctors, they're examining the patients first. And then after, if they feel it's necessary, then they refer to ophthalmology or neuro-ophthalmology, but it takes some time. Where, uh, whereas you know, if you could have a technology right there in the office where those doctors could use that technology, get a fundus photo, that would really expedite care. So in general, do you think enough of these examinations are being done right now at the right time? Unfortunately not. Many providers who are not ophthalmologists are not comfortable looking at the eye and examining, especially the fundus. It's challenging because unless the patient's dilated, it's really hard to get a clear view. So I think having a technology whereby these providers could fully examine the retina and then maybe send the images to uh, you know, an ophthalmologist or optometrist, whoever is available, to really review it and, and confirm the diagnosis is really valuable. So you're, you're talking about a little bit of an, an equipment gap here, where they're just you know you talked about the ophthalmoscope, everyone's trained on that, but it sounds like people aren't comfortable. You know. Yeah, you hit it right on the on the head. So it, the problem really goes back to medical school. And in medical school, most students, unfortunately, don't get much exposure to the eye. They don't have much training in examining the eye, and that includes using the direct ophthalmoscope. If they don't use it regularly, they're gonna become more and more and more uncomfortable with the exam, and eventually they will, probably won't even do it. And the truth is, if you go to any emergency department, the ophthalmoscope's sitting right there, but the number of times anyone actually reaches for it and uses it is very, very small, it's very slim, and it's unfortunate. So, I mean, it sounds like you think that fundus photography is kind of the way. Why does everyone not know how to do it besides medical school, you know, maybe in terms of equipment or something like that? In uh, non-ophthalmology practices, there are some institutions that have non-midriatic fundus cameras, but they're large, bulky machines, and they're expensive as well. So not all facilities are equipped. So having a device that is truly innovative in terms of its portability, something that's handheld, that's easily used, easily chargeable, that takes high quality, high resolution photographs that can then be uh, sent over to an eye care provider to analyze. I think having that type of technology would really revolutionize eye care. So it sounds like you kind of have two options in the current market, right? You've got large devices that are non mudratic and then you have smaller devices which might not be non mudratic So the Aurora IQ is kind of positions itself to be the best of both worlds. What's been your experience? So my experience with the Aurora IQ is that it is relatively easy to use. It's highly portable. Uh, it does require some training and practice, but once uh, you're comfortable with the device, images can be obtained within just a matter of seconds, usually less than 30 seconds to do both eyes. And you get really high quality photographs. And so again, I think that this device will revolutionize eye care for people who go into their regular primary care doctors or who may go into the ED with certain types of complaints. And really it would it will expedite their care because right now what happens is if a patient comes into an ED, they initially get evaluated by the, the emergency department physician, then they have to wait. They have to wait for them to call the ophthalmologist to come. And that can cost valuable time and potentially even be vision threatening. For example, if someone has a retinal stroke central retinal artery occlusion, for example, that is very time sensitive because if it is picked up within a certain time frame, uh, within 12 hours, treatment is available. But if treatment is, if the diagnosis is delayed, then treatment is delayed and vision may be uh, irreversibly damaged. About 10 years ago, uh, there was a young girl who came in, 10 year old girl who'd had chronic headaches and she was diagnosed by her uh, pediatrician as just headaches or migraine. And, um, and she went on like this for over a year. 
just being given migraine medications. And it turned out that she actually had papilledema from idiopathic intracranial hypertension, this IIH. And by the time she was actually diagnosed with papilledema, a year had gone by, and this child unfortunately had permanent vision loss. And this could have been prevented if it had been caught months in advance whether by her primary care doctor. She'd also had multiple visits to the ED for these headaches. And so this is something which is, you know, just so, so tragic that this happened, that this young individual lost her vision permanently, where it could have been avoided. If someone comes in with sudden vision loss, painful vision loss, one, and, and the patient is young, we think about optic neuritis and MS. And so having a fundus camera there to look at the optic nerve, to see really what's going on, can help expedite their care, can help really streamline any additional testing that may need to be done. For example, any neuroimaging, again, calling in the ophthalmologist, the neurologist, those types of situations, having a device where the images can be obtained and analyzed quickly is really, really revolutionary. Yeah, I definitely want to get into some of the specific conditions. Now, I know you just talked about retinal stroke and we've talked about papilledema. You know, what are some other conditions that you find that the Aurora IQ is really, really good for? Uh, where one of our emergencies in neuro-ophthalmology is uh, a neurologic condition in which there may be a tumor or high pressure in the brain. And what that manifests as in the eye or on the exa eye exam is swelling of the optic nerve, which we call papilledema. And this is, an, uh, you know, one of these signs that really warrants, you know, putting the patient in an emergency kind of a category where they need an ur urgent workup. But one of the very common conditions, unfortunately, that, uh, that can be picked up on a fundus exam is diabetic retinopathy. Mm -hmm. And there are different grades of diabetic retinopathy, but some can cause sudden vision loss. Being able to take a fundus photo in the ED, someone with sudden onset vision loss with a history of diabetes is invaluable. For quality of care purposes and, ex you know, again, expediting care, it's, it's going to be really a game changer, I think. Uh, let's talk about the physician's side of things. So, you know, you've used the Aurora IQ, you've used hand, you know, you've used fundus photography. So how is that user experience? So traditional fundus photography requires a lot of skill. And usually we actually have technicians that do this fundus photography. They are dedicated to doing these photographs. And now in contrast, uh, the Aurora, Aurora IQ is handheld. It's done by a simple, you know, just bringing the camera close to the patient. Uh, in terms of focusing, it's not as uh, user dependent. Uh, the machine can focus on its own. So again, the contrast between the traditional fundus photography that we have in the office, this is a very bulky device. Yeah. Uh, it's not portable and versus, you know, having something handheld that's e relatively easy to use with training. So when I learned how to use it, um, I practiced a few times and I was, you know, I would say within five, 10 minutes able to get pretty good quality photos. Mm. So I think, you know, it's, it's the training, but it's also practice. The more one does it, the better they're going to be um, qualified to do it. Great. Well, Dr. Banning, thanks so much for your comments and for joining us today. It's really, really nice insights. Thank you so much, Matt. It was a pleasure. And if your curiosity on handheld retinal imaging has been piqued, definitely go check out more on handheld fundus cameras and the Aurora IQ on Optimed's website.